Hello and welcome to episode 7 of my Building Through the Terrain Guides in Battle Games in Middle Earth. And then this tutorial, modeling workshop. Hello and welcome to episode 7 of my Building Through the Modeling Workshops from the Battle Games in Middle Earth magazines. This week it's all about trees. I'm going to point the camera down at the workbench now and we'll go through the magazine and see what it has to tell us. Making trees is what actually got me started in this hobby and as part of my advanced, but it's not actually advanced, my alternate build for this week, I'll show you the, basically one of the first things I ever made and I'll also actually show off some of those trees from two or three years back, maybe even more now, goodness me, time flies. Anyway, what we're going to do now is look at what the modelling workshop says in the Battle Games in Middle Earth in the 8th um, magazine now. Trees and woods. Woods and forests are some of the most commonly used and effective pieces of scenery you can create. This is very true. Making trees for your tabletop battlefield is a rewarding project and will greatly add to the realism of your battle games. And again, that's true. I love having trees on the tabletop. It really does make it look very nice and it gives you that immersion that's so important uh, for enjoyment. The items that you'll need is garden wire. So uh, I have several different gauges and I'll show you those later on. Masking tape, as always. Sisal moss, lichen or sponge. So I don't have any sisal mo moss, so we'll be using lichen and sponge in this. Thick card or mounting board. Scissors, super glue, large paintbrush, brown and green paint, flock or static grass, clippers, and PVA glue. So there we are. What I'm going to do is gather together my materials and we'll get cracking on making the base and then making the trunk. And we will see how easy this is and what a good quality product we can turn out at the end of this modeling workshop. So, step one making the base. To make sure our trees stand up, it is best to mount them on small bases. Using scissors or a craft knife, cut out a circle of thick card, approximately 5 to 10 centimetres in diameter. Don't worry if the circle is per isn't perfect, as rougher shapes will give a more natural look. So I've got myself some thick card here, some corrugated card. Um, and as you know, having if you've watched many of these series, I don't really normally use card for basing. But for this purposes, I'm going to. I'm sorry about the shadow. It's very bright here in Bulgaria this morning. So I'm going to draw a rough shape, and I am going to do it very rough, like so, which is going to be fine. And then I'm going to use my scissors to cut that out, because that's going to be the easiest tool for this purpose. Now I'm only going to make one tree on a cardboard base, because it's not heavy enough, and there are other options which I would like to show you. But in the interests of, I'll follow their instructions. Now once again it might be easier to use a craft knife because you don't get the bending of the card but I've managed to get away with that. Okay, so there we are. We have ourselves a base. Step two, take three to five lengths of garden wire, all about 15 centimeters or six inches long. Twist these together about halfway along, leaving roots at the bottom about two centimeters long. Fan out the long ends to make rough branches and flatten out the roots so they can be attached to the base. So this is where I grab my pot of bits, which happens to be in a milk thing. This is what happens when you have a child, everything gets reused. And I'm actually going to do this exactly as they're saying, and I'll show you a better way of doing it as well after I've finished this first build. So these are probably a bit thin, but then what I've got they're just normal wire. I'm not entirely sure what gauge. Let me see. I think probably this gauge is what they're talking about uh, for the, um, if, uh, if you're going to only use three. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take six of this slightly thinner gauge. And what we're going to do is we're going to twist it together, as they say. So a little top tip here is grab yourself some masking tape and you'll find it easier if you've masking taped the bottom together we're just above where the roots are going to go then you'll find it easier to control. So I'm going to grab some masking tape just from the drawer down here and I will wrap some masking tape around near the base. So what we then do 
as we start twisting. Because I've done it six, I'm actually going to do them in pairs. And this is the bit that takes the time. A good idea if you're doing this is to be watching a film or something and just sit and twist. And if you can get your missus involved or someone who's good at plaiting hair, which clearly I'm not, pity my daughter if she asked me to plait her hair for her. But you're ending up with a twist like that. I'm going to do that off camera and when I'm done I will show you what the next step is. The sun has moved round and now you'll be able to see what I'm doing and I will do another clip in a bit for the more advanced build of different techniques showing a little bit more about how I did the twisting because I'm aware that that was very badly shot and hard to see. However what you see in front of you is the result. Now I have deliberately done that so that it's got quite a nice bend to it and um, not done it totally straight because trees aren't necessarily straight, they can be, but more often than not they have a little bit of a bend to them and they do stick to one side. Okay, so the next step is three, filling the gaps. Using small strips of masking tape, cover the whole tree so that none of the wire is visible. Once this is done, you can glue the tree to your base using super glue. So what we're gonna do is take little strips of masking tape and start to wrap them around each of the bits of the tree. So we'll start at the bottom, because that's not a bad place to start. You've got to start somewhere. and begin wrapping. So I will get this done and the battery's running out anyway so I'll get this done and I'll be back to show you what it looks like when I've completed this process. So I've done wrapping this up in the masking tape as you can see that looks really rather good and so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next step which is attaching the base as I say it says to glue the base with super glue now I'm not going to use super glue in this case though of course you can one of the reasons is I'm actually running a little short because of another project I'm working on which is using all the super glue in the world but also I want to have a little bit more of a textured base and a little bit more interest to the base and also have it just a little more stable and sturdy. So what I'm going to do is get this polyfiller, which is spackle if you're in America, and apply that to the base and then I will embed the tree in the base, in the spackle and leave it to dry. Take a couple of hours for it to dry so it does add a little bit of time to the build, whereas of course super glue will dry in minutes, even less if you use super glue and uh, uh, accelerant. But that's fine. Um, and so what this is going to be, is it's going to be making it into a little bit more of a 3D kind of built up terrain piece, which is always more interesting to use. So yeah, going off piece a little bit here, but not that much. Let's just make sure we need a little bit more. And what it'll do is also, it'll allow me to bury in the roots so they look like they're disappearing into the soil. And so it will look a little bit more realistic. And we could use Luke's APS modeling compound for this as well. That would also work. So if you don't have spackle, we do have Luke compound. Um, mix a small amount up and this would also be a suitable method for that. So that's done. I am now going to let that dry. So I will be back on this bit when that is dry. While that's drying, I'm going to do a twisted wire tree, but done a little differently, so a little differently to how they've shown. What we're going to do is we're going to use far more of the wire, and I'm going to do two at least. Oh, I have got loads of trees, so I don't really need more. We've got two different types of wire here. We've got a thinner one and we've got a thicker one. Now, I'm going to praise Terranscapes. We do miss him. We miss him a lot. Uh, he is the one who has inspired most of my uh, feelings for how you make trees uh, and he did a lot of, did a fantastic series which I will link to below where he made lots of mistakes which is inspiring obviously and shows some of the stuff that you shouldn't do such as mixing wire gauges and all that sort of thing. But the thing that he made most clear is that you should always have a picture of a tree in mind. Look at a real tree. 
don't just make one out of your imagination because you'll probably get it wrong. And he's not wrong there. You probably will get it wrong. So I have some trees in my garden which I'm going to be using as my inspiration. You can also go onto the internet and have a look at some Google images or whatever, but always have something in mind that you're aiming towards. So what you've got in front of you is two bases. This one here is, was made years ago by myself and it has a hole in it already. And I'm going to show a technique which is um, hopefully gonna work quite well to make a more sturdy tree around a screw base. Um, and yeah, let's see how well that works. So you'll be able to screw the, um, the, the tree into the base um, and it won't move anywhere. Now you will have to uh, cut off the bottom bit, but hopefully this will be quite a good little technique to show off. However, because of how badly I shot the first opening section, I am going to show you how I go about doing this with many more branches because it's going to be a far more interesting tree. We actually need even more than that. I'll pop a link below to the wire that I use. I can't remember the gauge, but I'll pop it in the description. So I get about that much, about yay. And rather than using the um, masking tape immediately, what you do is you pull one out and you just wind it around so that it acts to prevent everything from splaying. And that then gets moved to as deep as you want. And yeah, you can wind it around. So wind that as tight as you can. Okay. Another thing to remember is that generally trees are thicker at the bottom than the top. So bear that in mind when you're doing this, that adding thickness to the base is not the worst thing in the world. So what we're then gonna do, uh, I'm looking at my tree out my window because it is literally outside of my window, is it forks not very far up. However, it does fork a little far way up. So I'm gonna pull another strand out and do the same thing, so wind it around. I have seen people do this using power tools which looks very cool, I think, until probably you make a mistake. <laughs> and then it's not so cool because, yeah, you've got a power tool going crazy. So I'll just wind that around a bit more, and then that probably will be quite good. So it then splits into two. So we'll take roughly half each of each bundle and separate them out like so. Grab another one, and you're probably starting to work out the uh, strategy here. Start twisting it round. Because what you're doing is you're using each bit of metal to both build up thickness and also give the structural integrity of the whole thing. So we've got another one there. And by pulling out wires from within the bundle, you are naturally thinning down the trunk of the branches in a prototypical way. Not that prototypical is massively important on the wargaming table as such as you need to be absolutely millimeter perfect, but immersion is really important. And if something looks odd, then you'll probably notice it because you've been looking at trees all your life and you'll be like, that doesn't look like a proper tree. And then it will spoil your, the immersion. So that's that one done. So we're going to keep going for a little bit more. We're going to get to another inch or so. So I will crack on with that. Probably put some music on.
of the bending done. It's taken me 10 minutes of clip, uh, though of course you won't have been sat for 10 minutes. I'm going to now turn the camera off and finish this sat down in a more comfortable position. But you've seen the process. You are literally splitting off, twisting, splitting off, twisting, and it's getting narrower and narrower, and it's making a thing that looks like a tree. Also, you can move things out of the way. Don't worry about the shape now, because it's wire, it bends, and it can be repositioned. And the technique I'm going to show you can actually be repositioned right the way through. So I'm going to go away and do that, and I'll be back with the next step for this more advanced build when it is ready to be done. That was fun. It's actually been quite a long time since I was last doing this because I went outside, sat in the sun, and then I've been enjoying the weather. But I've come back in now just to get a little bit more done. So what I've done, as you can see, is I've wound the whole tree and I've got all these bits of long, straggly bit. And what I'll be doing is just taking my wire cutters, simply chopping them off. And I'll save that wire for another use. The other thing is, I think I'm going to put this one onto this base and I'm going to make use of the hole that's already there, possibly. Um, I'm not 100% convinced about this at the moment. However, what I think I'm going to do is tr trim this down of all of the individual bits, uh, the individual lengths that are going to prevent me going into the hole in the first place with the wire clippers, like so. And then when I have one, have enough left that's just going to fit into that hole, I'll make it quite short so that it doesn't go through um, and then I'll stick that in. And what I'll do is I'll fill that gap in with polyfiller and then put some sand and paint and stuff over it. But we'll come to that later on. So I'm going to keep, keep on tidying all this up and I'll be back with the next step. So we have two twisted wire trees. We have the first one which is done pretty much to the instructions in the magazine, which is actually looking pretty cool. We have the second one, which is more advanced, more uh, fancy, and looks really well as well. I'm not totally sure about the base at the moment. I may change that, but right now it's got five of the strands pushed through the hole, and then the rest of it's just kind of pushed in there. I may decide, as I say, to change that. The final one I'm going to do now is going to be using the screw technique and this is the third one that I'm going to do um, with the twisted wire and then the final technique will be completely different. With the, with the screw technique what we're going to be doing is we're going to be beginning by winding around and winding the, um, the screw to give us our base. So we will be wrapping our, um, our wire around the screw. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to this base very, very lightly. And this is literally just by doing it with my hand. So I can't be bothered to stand up and get a screwdriver. Self-tapping screws. And then what we'll do is we've got this thinner gauge wire than I've used previously. I might actually unscrew that and do this by hand. Because it's going to need to go in. We can actually do this by sight. So it's going to need to go in about that far. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this thinner gauge wire and I'm going to wrap it all the way around the screw. And the idea here for this bit is to make this as thick as the head of the screw. So I'll get that done, which will take a little while, and I'll be back to show you the next step. First of all, I will say that I've just done a little bit of a play around with the idea of making use of the screw to act as a base, and I think I need a bit more experimentation before I embarrass myself on camera with it, because it just didn't work. However, what I have decided is this old base isn't really the right size for this tree, so I've drilled a hole in the middle of the other one, which will allow me to set it in there. And what I'm about to do now is cover over all of the, um, of the round wire with the masking tape the same as the other one. So I'll get that done. You've seen how it works. I won't show you again and I'll come back in a little bit when it is finished. These are now nicely set up and they're um, going to be ready for painting. So let me read what it says here. Painting the tree. Paint the trunk of your tree with brown paint. Using a large brush you might find you need more than one coat to achieve an even coverage. Once this is dry paint the base green. Now I'm going to do two things here. You can see both of my trees here. I'm going to paint the normal tree, the tree that's following their instructions in brown. And I have my umber, my dark umber that I use so much. And I'm going to do that now. And I will also put a base onto both of the bottoms in brown because I'm not going to follow their 
uh, basing as I never do because I want this to fit in with the rest of my terrain and if I do that just green and green it won't look right. So I'm going to paint this brown and the base of that brown and then I'll be back to show you what I'm going to do with this tree which will make try to make it a little bit more realistic. So first of all let's just put some paint on like so. There we are that's good one coat. I will now leave that to dry. What with our crazy life is at the moment, it's been a while since I've uh, been looking at this and even thinking about this build, but I've got a few days left until I want to publish it, so I'm going to crack on. I might fail to do the pine tree, however I will add that, and when I've done it I'll link it in the description of this below, but I'll do that maybe as a different video. Uh, so I think I might just finish these two, um, it's just been crazy, what with the, the virus and all the other stuff that's going on. Um, I've not, just not had the time that I normally would have to uh, work on my videos and my terrains. So anyway, so what we've got here is, this, is the more advanced build after that little rambly intro. And I'm going to paint this with a mix of the same brown as I used in the other one, but also some greys in as well. And then I'll probably uh, um, add some other tones and colours also. So we're going to pop some paint onto my hard palette, onto this palette, and we will grab some grey out of here and dip it in and what we're going to do I may lighten it later but for now we're just going to go with the dark grey and the brown and what we're going to do is we're going to live mix that together to get kind of a brownie grey funnily enough because what you'll find in real life is that trees are not brown they're grey, they're white, they're green they're yellow they're all sorts of colours but not necessarily, and not generally, totally brown. So if we paint that on, what you can see is that is a lovely colour for a tree trunk. And we'll just paint that all over. Now the thing to be aware of is I'm not trying to get the colour the same all the way across. Because another thing is, is that trees are not uniform. So if you're trying to be realistic, don't do it all one colour. So with that done, I'm not going to come in while well, it's still wet with the much lighter grey and just dab it in in places just to give it some variation because it is a little bit too samey for me and like I say, certainly the tree I'm copying is not uniform. Now in some places the masking tape has actually come away which is why I don't generally like doing that technique but it should dry in place with this paint. So there we are, there I'm happy with that now. That's a little bit more realistic. So you can see that it's not brown, it's grey, it's mottled, it's discoloured, it's, it's odd coloured. And that's exactly what we want. So we'll just make sure that we haven't got anywhere where the masking tape has come away and where you can see the yellow. And we'll hope that that dries. And if it doesn't, we'll come in with some super glue later and stick that all down and I'll show you that. I'm going to let that to dry now and I'll be back as soon as possible with the next step on that build. But that's looking really nice. I'm actually quite pleased with this tree. I can't wait to get it on the table. The next stage is finishing the base. Using a large old brush, paint the base of the tree with a generous coat of watered down PVA, which I have here, which is my usual terrain, terrain glue, and then put static grass or flock. So what I'm going to do is make use of my homemade flock and I'll be putting links to all the videos about how I make my PVA mix, watered down PVA mix, and also how I make that uh, flock. So I will do the, this tree and then later on off camera, because there's no point in showing you the same thing twice, I'll do the same thing for the other tree. But basically we're going to paint it on we're going to leave the roots showing, so we'll paint it on around the roots and then we will scatter on our flock. Now these are nice and small, so pretty much can be done in one go, like this. So first of all we'll put the dark flock on and then we'll put a slightly lighter flock on and we'll leave it to dry. So scatter the flock on, as you can see I've put my newspaper down to protect my surface. There we are, some nice dark flock. And then the lighter flock. And then we're done. That just needs to dry then. 
I'm struggling a bit at the moment uh, because of how I haven't really put as much time into this as I thought I would and to how I'm going to do the next step which is the foliage. Now I don't actually have any materials to do it really so I don't know we will find out what happens you'll see in the in a short while but I'm actually sitting here going I'm not sure how I'm going to actually do the foliage. Anyway there we are I will do the other tree leave it to dry and then we'll be back for the next and final step which is putting the foliage on whatever I decide to do. So we come to the final process that I'm going to do on these trees. I'm actually only going to do the foliage on the basic tree, not on the advanced tree. That's because the advanced tree I'm thinking of doing something quite fancy with sprouting and I just don't have the time or the motivation or the energy in the world that we're in now to um, focus on that. So I'll come back to that in another video. Uh, and when I wrap up, I'll show you some other trees that I've made uh, and link to other YouTubers that have good techniques. So let's have a look at the foliage. Adding foliage to your tree is the most important part of making the model, but it's also the trickiest part. It is worth taking your time over this to make your tree look really effective, which is what I'm going to do for my other, for my other one. So what you do is you take a branch at a time and you apply PVA glue. Now. I don't know about you guys, and I'll be fascinated to hear from you in the comments, so please do drop them below. I have yet to make a tree which I'm particularly happy with. I've done lots of different types of tree, which I'll show you after this section, and always, always the flock falls off if I use flock, or if I'm using clump foliage like I am now. This is my homemade clump foliage, uh, which I will do a video on making, but is basically washing up scrubber that's been mixed with paint. I've always struggled to make things stick and I think I'm going to struggle with this as well which is another reason why I'm only doing this one and I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the other but as you can see it's just I always struggle with this bit and it's frustrating so I would be really interested if some of the more experienced people who have managed to do this more successfully maybe have some ideas it's just something I struggle with. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna fight this because I don't think that giving up is part of my makeup. And if I can learn something while I'm doing this, you'll be sure that I will introduce you to the, what I've learned and I'll tell you, but if I haven't learned anything, then I'll just tell you as well because yeah, that's what this is about. So onward, I'll get this process done and then we'll do the wrap up. It's the next day. I'm feeling a lot more positive than I was when I filmed the last clip. Um, and also my decision just to be patient, to put a little bit on and then leave it has paid off. As you can see, we have some flock or some uh, uh, greenery going on this basic tree. And uh, yeah, I will keep doing that and we'll probably show the final results of both of these trees in the next video because I want to get this done. It is actually Tuesday. Today is the day I should be publishing this. So I'm going to be wrapping this up now, getting it edited and published as soon as I can. On this one, I'm mumming and ironing. I quite like it sparse. At the moment, looking outside, there's snow. And this tree that I based it on had been cut and pollarded. And so it's actually bare. It doesn't have any greenery on it anyway. It's got some new growth coming up, which I might try to model on, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. So anyway, well, that one I'm going to leave for a while. And this one I will finish and I will show in the next video properly. The final thing I wanted to do was to show you the other two, um, tr the older trees I made quite a long time ago now, a long time, years ago. So this one makes use of the uh, coconut coir, so it's the stuff that you use to line hanging baskets. Uh, and that's been glued onto the, it's made, made in the same way with twisted wire. That's been glued on and then I've just put flock over the top, so it's my homemade sawdust flock. And this does fall off. I mean, it annoys me so much if someone's got a better idea, and no matter how much I do this, seal it with glue or whatever, it still falls off when you're using it. And this was what I was going to show a building technique as part of this video, but just what with the way the world is, time and motivation ran out. But this is a really good way of, of very easily making um, fir trees. So it is a barbecue skewer in the middle, and it is more of the coconut mat matting cut into circles and teased apart, and then you spray it with glue and just dip it in your flock and you're done. 
and those ones work really well. They're very, very easy to do, and I will try to either link to another video or make one myself at some other time. But anyway, that's what that is. I'll turn the camera around and I will finish the video off. So there you are, what a weird time to be alive. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it's been a bit disjointed and not really quite as uh, enthusiastic as most of my videos are. Hopefully the mojo will come back and the next video that I do will be a lot more full of the joys of spring. But um, that's the way the world is now and there's far worse things to be suffering from than a little bit of a lack of motivation for videos. Uh, but I've got there, I've managed to do it and uh, I'm signing off and gonna go and edit this and get this published as soon as possible so I can make my Tuesday deadline. And I'll be back in a fortnight for for another um, of the these videos working through the terrain from battle games in middle earth i'm really enjoying it notwithstanding the struggles of this week it's really nice to have the uh, motivation and also to be showing some really cool basic techniques so i hope you've enjoyed it and please comment below i'd love to hear from you in this time when everyone is isolating it's really nice how the community is pulling together and there's lots of things going on and lots of people talking and there seems to be more communication and contact which is just just perfect so anyway i'll stop rambling now I'll say if you're not yet subscribed, don't forget to do that. And don't forget also to ding the bell. YouTube won't, probably won't mo uh, notify you about my videos if you don't ding that bell. So get it done and then you'll know when I'm about to publish one. And I will sign off as traditional by saying thank you very much for watching Beard Clipper. And I'll add, please stay safe, stay well, and look after yourselves out there. And I'll see you on the next video.